second John. Look at the dashboard. Yeah. I was look at the I wonder if they're talking about Hello. Put Hi, how are you? I'm still I'm trying good. to get my headphones working. Um I do oh, have okay. a um our division meeting in a few minutes. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll join as soon as that meeting is over. Yeah. Double booked. Okay. How have you been? Hey, I am good. I'm wondering if you're going to make roll call with us or not. Um, what I can do is I can hang out, um, you know, to make it because I do want to be sure we have quorum. But I know if, uh, I, yeah, I want to make sure we have quorum. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, it's nice to be a VIP, but not in this way. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. You should have a link. And somebody, somebody else just got this. So hopefully he'll share that. Oh, okay. All right. No. 
Okay. Oh, here he is. He just did. He just did it. Oh, he just so did it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, we are still waiting a few more minutes. It's not yet one o'clock, but obviously we'll wait maybe two minutes after to make sure we get everybody in. It is now one o'clock, but we are definitely still waiting. We'll give it a few minutes because I'm waiting for Michelle to come in as well. Hello, hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Howdy. There she is, okay. One meeting after another. <laughs> I think we're gonna wait a few more minutes. Madam Chair, with our current number, I think we need five members. Five more or five total? <laughs> Five total. <laughs> I'm sorry if I was. <laughs> I kind of paused. I didn't realize that. I didn't finish the statement. My apologies. <laughs> you're going to give me our palpitations there, Diani. <laughs> I did receive notification from two members, but should we wait until at least 105? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to uh, go to my division meeting, my um, OSSS meeting, literally. <laughs> so I'm just like toggling the line here. I'll stay on for a couple more meeting or minutes.
Are you going to have to leave us, Pam? Yeah, I have my OSSS uh, meeting. They're recording it. Um, this meeting goes longer than that one, but this is our division meeting that we have every two weeks. If you leave us, if we only just make quorum and you leave us and we lose quorum, then we have to not meet anyway. I'm aware. That's why I'm hanging on just That's to see. <laughs> I'm, I got you in mind. Thank you. <laughs> but I, can't get my head, I can't get my headphones to work either. And we're back in the office like nobody thought stuff through too well. So I'm not happy about that. <laughs> You're back in the office as of today with that executive order? Um, yes, but it's funny because I'm using my laptop from home because I can't even log into my system here. So I lose about an hour and a half, you know, between driving and logistics just to do the job. And I'm just going to, I'm going to mute myself there because I, yeah. <laughs> what executive order are you talking about, Brooke? Um, our Governor Lombardo signed an executive order that all state employees must return back to the office. Well, actually, there was a memo sent out by our superintendent that said we needed to return to the office uh, three days a week starting January 3rd with no guidance, no point people, no logistical plan for how it's done, knowing that there was not enough office space for some people in Colorado, but did it anyway with no um, process procedures or guidance or support. Um, I would have done something a little differently or pretty much like spoke to my people. Um, I would have assessed productivity because productivity went up. <laughs> yeah. We're okay. Done. Madam Chair, I think we can start with attendance. We have nine members so we need five for quorum i'm pretty sure we have six on the line if you'd like to go ahead yes niani let's go ahead and do that okay good afternoon and welcome to the subcommittee meeting for the technical assistance for governor's interagency council on homelessness this meeting has been publicly noticed and compliance with nevada's open meeting law chair michelle fuller hellauer will call the meeting to order good afternoon it is 106, uh, January 10th, 2023. Happy New Year, everybody. And I would like to call uh, the January meeting of the Nevada Interagency Council on Homelessness Subcommittee uh, of the Technical Assistance to Order. Niani, would you please call roll? Yes. Chairwoman Michelle fuller Hellauer. Present. Captain Mark Bello. Karen Van Hess. Noga Valdez. Hetty Reed. Present. Emily Paulson. Present. Dr. Pamela Janelle. Present. Chris Murphy. Present. Brooke Page. Present. Madam Chair, we do have quorum. <laughs> Thank y'all. Welcome to uh, welcome to 2023. Um, agenda item number two is general public comments. Uh, no action may be taken uh, upon a matter raised under this item of the agenda until the matter itself has been specifically included on an agenda as an item upon which action may be taken. Uh, comments will be limited to three minutes. Just as a reminder, this is the first of two uh, public uh, comment periods. We'll have another one at the end of this uh, agenda. Uh, does anybody have any public comment? Please unmute yourself and state your name for the council.
Any public comment? Seeing none, hearing none, we'll close this item and we'll move on to agenda item number three for possible action and approval. Discussion and a possible approval of the minutes for November 8th, 2022 and for December 13th, 2022 of the subcommittee for the technical assistance meetings. Is there any discussion for either one of the uh, minutes for either one of those meetings? If not, I'll take the motion for approval. I move to approve the agenda, or I'm sorry, the minutes from uh, November 8th and December 13th, 2022. We have a motion. Do I have a second? This is Chris, I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those uh, that approve indicate by saying aye. 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 You have to unmute yourself by to say for us to hear you on record to say aye or. <laughs> uh, Niani, you need that vocally recorded, correct? Um, yes, So please. we can't just do thumbs up. We have to vocally record on the. So let's try that again. So we have a we have a uh, motion. We have a second. All those in favor, please unmute and indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. <laughs> any any opposed, please unmute and indicate by saying no. Any abstentions, please unmute and indicate as by saying by indicating as such. Motion carries. OK, agenda item number four for possible action, uh, discussion and possible action regarding the subcommittee's next steps toward formulating the Nevada ICH strategic plan based on feedback and suggestions received from the three continuum of care after chair Michelle Fuller Hellauer's presentation on them. Well, I don't really have a presentation per se. Uh, although, Brooke, did you create a presentation for last month? No, I didn't receive any information on what the, the feedback from this communities. I only saw one from the rural communities. Yeah, so um, I'll just give a verbal feedback. Um, I just didn't want to step on your toes if you had um, gone through the time and effort to do a presentation that I wasn't aware of. So, uh, Michelle Fuller, how long for the record? I did, pre as uh, was re requested by this group uh, in November, I believe, uh, I presented at each of the COC leadership teams uh, on our strategic plan and asked for feedback from each of those groups. The uh, general feedback uh, was uh, overarching, very positive. In they um, appreciated the work that has been done on the strategic plan, uh, that they felt that there were a lot of goals um, and a lot of strategic issues and it was a lot to focus on at one time, although recognizing that there's a lot of work that needs to be done and uh, that they're all important. Uh, so there was, you know, but, but that we do need to figure out a way to um, prioritize. So there was a, I think that that was kind of a generalization across the board that, that the, everybody agreed upon. Um, I think that the, they generally uh, indicated that um, they do all want, it, want to be involved um, at, 
in helping us move forward. So they would like to be involved in um, some type of a work group. Uh, they people were throwing out names and let us get know how to get involved and would really like to be uh, part of the uh, implementation and further development. Uh, they absolutely were willing to uh, participate in distribution of surveys and were absolutely willing to help in um, any kind of focus groups and getting collecting information. So that was that was general, uh, you know, across all three COCs. The I'm look, kind of looking at my questions here. Um, each of the COCs said that they would need to kind of go back and think about um, the things that they are doing um, and what they could do that would roll up into the state strategic plan. And um, Katrina Peters from the Northern Nevada COC offered to do a uh, kind of a side by side um, matrix with the our plan and the northern nevada's plan kind of um you know kind of item by item and then we can kind of surf that to the other uh to the other cocs to kind of add to that the on what other items for the other plan the other cocs plans kind of align Right, and then we can start kind of checkboxing what what they're collecting to kind of feed up into their plan um, for collecting outcomes. So kind of getting a, a big matrix, I guess, would be the best term uh, to determine who is working on what and how they're collecting the data to determine how they're meeting those those outcomes. So I thought that was an interesting concept um, and I said that I would um, I would bring that back, uh, but thought that that might be a good a good. Strategy to at least start with and um, Katrina offered to um, be part of any work group that we might want to to um, include and I know that we have some extra folks from um, other. COCs that have um, have signed in as well um, and then. We had uh, the rural Nevada COC sent. They have had a couple of um, very long meetings, a couple of long meetings where they actually went through our our strategic plan and identified where their goals are are actually in alignment um, with our goals. And I can send that document actually. Let me send Niani. I'm going to send that document to you now. I should have sent it to you earlier, and I apologize. It's been one of those months already. It's great because we're busy and we're going to tackle this this year. <clears throat> so, um, so the the good thing, I think, the good thing that came out of all of this was that there's we've got good energy across the state and i think that the feedback has been thankfully the there's a, a body at the state level that is working to collate and collaborate with around all homeless services and trying to identify ways that we can work collectively to address this issue of housing instability and folks that are homeless um, and experiencing homelessness as a as a collective and that we are interested in not just making making decisions in a silo but making sure that we are person-centered in the work that we do moving forward. 
Um, so that's that's the takeaway that that I had after those three meetings with the COC leadership. Um, Brooke, I know that you were in at least a couple of those. Um, Chris, I think you were in a couple of those meetings. I don't know if anybody else uh, in the on the committee were um, or on the yeah on the committee were in any of those meetings. Anybody else have any feedback or any takeaways you wanted to? to bring up. This is Chris. Um, the only thing, I was really impressed at the willingness of everybody wanting to be part of this solution. And that, and that to me uh, was, was really inspiring. Uh, and the only meetings that I attended was uh, the rural Nevada uh, continuum meetings. But uh, there was a lot of good discussion, a lot of good feedback uh, that, of course, much more than what could be captured in, in the bullet points that, that were forwarded on. But I, I look forward to the working groups in coming up with some solid solutions. I don't have anything else to add. I was part of the, I listened in on the Southern Nevada uh, DOC presentation um, and just kind of echo the importance of it being collaborative. I love Katrina's idea that you raised, Michelle, of doing the side by side metrics to leverage existing efforts that are already underway and to sort of not reinvent the wheel, but build on what's currently happening uh, throughout the state. And then I also seeing where the gaps are and kind of where the space that ICHH could really play a leadership role at the state level that may need to be addressed because a lot of these issues may require more state actors to be uh, present to engage and to really uh, move the needle on um, state level policy. So. Thank you. All right. Any other comments, suggestions? Okay, so what is our next steps? We've gotten some feedback. Well, um, I think when we had last, and this is Brooke for the record, when we had last uh, talked about operationalizing the plan and developing the plan, um, the first step was to get feedback. Um, I recognize also that we talked about surveying um and getting feedback from people with lived experience and and helping to sort of inform what additional priorities or work groups needed to be established so it wasn't that this group was sort of creating that in a silo um, but really wanted to kind of figure out do we need work groups to focus on this and kind of you know address the actionable steps and 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 like working sessions um and i'm not sure if that was a question that was raised to the COCs, um, but it feels like, you know, there is so much that in order for us to do it justice, we kind of need to be able to think about how we can work on this in, a, in, a, in more of a working groups to develop action steps. Hi, this is Emily Paulson. Um, I'm wondering, could we ask the COCs to report back what they are already doing? I know, I'm not sure if that's exactly the same thing Katrina Peters had proposed from the Northern Nevada COC. I know it sounded like kind of a crosswalk of how the local plan or the, the regional plan in Northern Nevada aligns with the state plan. 
but more so than that, you know, what is already taking place um, across the strategic plan? So sort of taking an inventory of what is already in progress or in process. And maybe having a way to do that throughout the between now and whenever the strategic plan would be due again to be reviewed, just to be kind of keeping a pulse on the the progress of local communities to to take up different initiatives and new projects, or to take items from the plan and make them actionable. And we, that might be a big ask and COC staff are always already uh, have so much on their plates, but could that be something we could kindly request that they do at some frequency? I think it would be important, Emily, to your point, if we set up the infrastructure so that way folks can simply, you know, if it's a, a working document that, you know, maybe I'm thinking of like a dynamic workbook worksheet that folks can just go in and plug in their action steps that they are doing or work that's happening um, and give folks a, a deadline to kind of go in and plug and play. So it's something that can even, even be like a living document because as things evolve and things change, COCs can go to that place and update their, their action steps to include new processes or things that have they're no longer doing and just kind of keep things updated. Mm -hmm. And this is a way that they may be able to discover and have discussion around items that are not being worked on. That, and that perhaps are also a part of their local plans. Right. And it could also inform COC applications too, because if we're capturing a lot of this information that ultimately can help operationalize competitive NOFAs on some of those systems change type of questions. And so it could be a, a good tool. Another benefit of this could be that, for example, there's a program that's um, has operationalized an item on the plan and now another community in the state wants to, um, what's the word, replicate, replicate that program, right? And, oh, I had, you know, I could see an example of, you know, recently learning about a, a justice program that Reno had, right? And I had no idea until the statewide conference on homelessness that the Nevada Homeless Alliance put on that that was even happening in our state. And it was a one of those things where it's like, oh, that'd be great to see something similar happen in Southern Nevada, right? Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. think it could lead, uh, partners across the state to those opportunities as well, right? To learn from one another mm -hmm. about how this plan is coming to life and how it can move from one community to across the state or to other communities in the state. Hedy? Thanks, um, Hedy Reed for the record. And I don't, maybe it's, I'm going backwards, but I, I remember talking about a, finding a way to prioritize uh, the goals within the goals, essentially. So um, as a group to prioritize the goals within the strategic plan to then make action steps going forward. Mm -hmm. And maybe part of that is the crosswalk with the COCs, like what's already happening and how we can maybe support that effort as a statewide group or even on a local level, and then working through it that way. Mm -hmm. or, and then maybe if there's priorities that aren't being tackled by COCs, figuring out a way to do that. Yeah. For, for the record, I agree with you, Hetty, and I think the crosswalk will help us elevate what needs to be a priority because it's not being addressed possibly or is being addressed. So I think you're actually right. We did talk about the goals within the goals and figuring out, you know, how do we even, and that's kind of, I think where the survey came up was like surveying people with lived experience and the CLCs to really think about what should be prioritized. 
but I think this inventory that Emily is speaking about will help us maybe identify what those priorities should be. Teddy, your hand is still up. Did you have something else? My mistake. No problem. Um, Niani, I have a question. Um, we have we have somebody from uh, the broader audience that has a their hand up. I'd love to call on them, but I don't know if I'm allowed to um, since this is a state open meeting law, open meeting uh, under the state. So would you uh, you or Ryan give me some guidance, please? I'm pretty sure they can speak during public comment, but unfortunately not during um, the regular meeting where you guys are discussing agendized business. Okay, that's unfortunate, but thank you. Okay, anybody on the, um, on the subcommittee have any other uh, comments? This is Brooke for the record. I had a question um, <clears throat> and possibly for Niani as well and the staff. Is it something that we could make if we made a motion to action next steps to develop this type of work plan? Would that be support that the staff from Niani's team could help us develop that? That we could sort of populate all of the various different goals and sub goals within the strategic plan into a spreadsheet and then have there be space for all of the COCs to be able to go in and populate their current work that they're doing. Is that something that, that your team could help us with? Niani Cooper, uh, for the record, yes. So are we, we just need some specifics. Are you guys referencing a crosswalk between I'm assuming the state strategic plan that's posted now and the three COC plans. Yeah, not their plan so much. I would leave it up to the COCs to populate what they're doing in relation to the goals that, that are set in the state plan. It's just a matter of us having the infrastructure, either like a, a live workbook that folks can go in and populate their information, but but setting up the infrastructure so COCs can do that. I'm going to say, Niani Cooper, for the record again, I'm going to say yes, we can. That is something my team can um, work on and put together. As long as we have, yes, I'm going to say yes. I can, we can get the details. That's, that's what I, I'm fishing for that right now, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you can action, um, pass a, uh, a motion to actionize that, and that would be something that we would do. Okay. Michelle Fuller, hell hour for the record. So we can figure out the details and give that to you, um, and you can make it all uh, workable and pretty and and all that, so that we can the COCs can access it and populate it. That's what I'm hearing. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so I think that that sounds like. Um, a doable. Um, or a feasible next step. Um, is that. Is that an do we need to action item that do we need to like vote on that as a next step or. This is Ryan, you don't have to. Thank you, I mean, Ryan. it's a as an action item. So. You know, you could, but you're the chair. You don't have to. You can take it under advisement and tell staff what you want. That sounds like a lot of power. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any other suggestions, um, ideas, thoughts? For next steps? Yes, it's Emily Paulson again. So um, I, I, 
so this crosswalk would identify across each of the three COCs. What is um, from the out of the strategic plan from the from our council? What is planned? In um, not not planned, currently planned. What uh, if it's already um, in? If it's already operationalized, what are you know like some, some like highlights of that? Highlights like a general idea of how they're fulfilling that strategy from the plan. And um, if it's something that's not planned or is currently in planning, you know what are their um, I guess, how do we want to collect their feedback on that would be helpful to us to incorporate into our plan as an action item? What information would we want the COCs to provide back to us to include? In the action yeah, plan? Look for the record, I think that would be important for us to capture their ideas around maybe things that are not planned, but specifically what they think would be important from their geography um, related to that goal or sub goal. If they've got feedback on that. To kind of help inform. You know, maybe our next steps around if there's a place that's not currently ha that doesn't have any actionable steps that are happening. If they have some ideas. Michelle, from your point of view as, as, as a COC administrator, what do you think would be the most efficient way to go about this? Would it be having them fill out a worksheet, you know, as, as Brooke has suggested initially, and then for the items that aren't planned or where planning is in progress, having, you know, like listening sessions with them to, to kind of talk through what the ICH should adopt in the action plan? So maybe kind of giving them the the opportunity to get it on paper first, but then having also an opportunity to really listen to listen and talk, have a discussion with each COC to kind of help make it, you know, bring bring the document more to life in terms of what we would need to include. Yeah, uh, Michelle Fuller, hello, or for the record. Um, Yes, thank you for the question, Emily. And putting on my COC hat, uh, great question. Um, and thinking about this whole package that we're thinking of rolling out, I think the tool that we use to roll out this kind of crosswalk or this question, this, I guess, the matrix or crosswalk, I think will be important. I think that if we use something like, uh, I don't know, smart sheets or um, something that's intuitive, right? That that will allow, something that's more than just Excel, that would allow not only just to enter information, but to also upload um, documents that might be might be uh, applicable to something that they're doing um, that is a, that is that pertains to that particular issue, right? Or that particular goal, uh, I think might be helpful for us because there might be something that one of the COCs is doing or has done that is very pertinent to something at the state that we want to know or should know. And if we could up just upload as we as a COC could just you know upload a document right there into that electronic document, it would save a lot of time and effort if we could just do that. And it would be right there. And on our side, taking my COC hat on, putting ICH hat on, I think on our side, uh, it seems to me that it would be easier for us to know what documents go with what items, which goals and which strategic items when we're reviewing the feedback from the COCs. So I think that if we consider, if we think about what tools that we're using, I think that's going to be important. Now putting my COC hat back on, 
I'm going to get myself dizzy here, um, but putting my COC back, hat back on, um, I think that, yes, saying, you know, no, we don't have the I, things planned here. Um, and we are, and I, th I think that us coming back and, and having, whether it be one on one meetings or small group meetings with the COCs, uh, I think would be really helpful. Um, I also think that maybe we somehow find out how they would like to have give feedback, right? Because sometimes it's more cumbersome to say, can we call you and ask more information or can we schedule another meeting or whatever? Maybe it's, you know, is there another, is there some way that we can gather information from you that you are already meeting to that you feel comfortable giving this feedback, like at a statewide COC meeting, right? And and maybe the COCs that aren't doing things might feel comfortable giving feedback to us at a statewide COC meeting rather than us calling or meeting with them in a small group separately and get a better bang for our buck um, if all three COCs are not planning to do a handful of things and getting feedback from all the COCs at the same time. Does that, I don't know if that made any sense or not, but that's, that's what I'm putting out there. Okay, I have another, another idea. <laughs> Trying to just think back to what the USICH just did to, you know, they spent a couple of years, it seems, getting feedback on their strategic plan before they published it. So it's just trying to think back, like, how did that go, right? Um, and so what if we did the inventory with COC administrators, right, with the staff that are uh, the collaborative applicants and, and give them plenty of time to do it, knowing the administrative burden that we're requesting of them. Uh, kindly requesting of them, right? Um, but then we hold open listening sessions with the community and we ask the COCs to help promote those opportunities just like you did for the USICH, right? You said the USICH has asked us to schedule this call. It is an open listening session for anyone in the community to provide feedback on the next steps of the ICH strategic plan, which is the action plan. So then it's not on the CSC administrator's shoulders to help with the action planning stage. We really, and it provides that opportunity for a broader base of the community to provide input. Just an idea. So I had a thought, um, Hetty Reed, with that. Do we have a timeline where we would like to have some action steps developed? Because I think that might um, kind of sway which direction we go with how we get feedback. Because I think these are all really good ideas, but some might take longer than others. Yeah, I think it's a great question, Brooke, for the record, uh, especially given the legislative session um, and things that we may want to sort of prioritize sooner than later because of the session. Um, I think it would be helpful for us to sort of identify and from mm -hmm. a technical assistance prior, like prioritizing what is the kind of sense of urgency for 2023 that we want to prioritize even questions that we bring to the COCs and things that we capture or information that we're capturing. Yeah, Emily Paulson, for the record, I, I agree with that. We, as the technical assistance committee, if there are items right now that we can determine um, action items around, even if it's preliminary, I think we, sh we should be empowered to do that. But while we also create a, 
a process by which we can um, include the community and the COCs in next steps as well. So both and. Mm -hmm. I think this is the first time we the that the ICH is attaching an action plan. And I like that we're sort of like open to evolution about how to best do that. And in, in looking at how other bodies similar to us have have gone about that process. And I think I think we could could definitely look at some examples of what the US ICH did, although like I said, I think they that happened over a couple of years. I don't know if we want to take that much time, but maybe we give ourselves the time to have this be a living, living, evolving document, the mm -hmm. action plan. Super for the record, I have another idea too that I wanted to keep, it's on my heart. So I think maybe thinking about us as a, a technical assistance group, um, identifying champions within the technical assistance group to own various different pieces of the plan um, and possibly divvying it up amongst all of us to sort of do our own roadshows based off that priority, going out and not only leveraging the COCs, but other state agencies, other departments or other information that we should be gathering to help bring back information to this group to help inform our work. Um, and so it's just been kind of thinking about, it feels large, but if we cut it up into manageable components and identifying champions to help move these conversations forward, then it could also, we could be kind of eating at the apple in multiple ways. Michelle Fuller Hallower for the record. <clears throat> you know, I really, I really like that idea. Um, and to expand on that, um, I am, I think that we need to expand the people involved, right? So I think that we need not only do we need broader membership at this level um but i think that that might be where our working groups come in right that and and then we can pull in expertise um and do whatever we need to do around things but that but that's just a thought mm -hmm. And Emily Paulson for the record, and, and how can we also um, utilize those staff resources of the ICH, the, the team that Niani um, supervises to help with, with this as well? I know, Niana, you're probably like, again, similar to what you said before, we would need to provide more explicit direction, I'm sure, but. Um... Uh, yes, anything that we can do, we're here to uh, help and serve. So we just would need the directions. Obviously, if um, Michelle, if you were looking to expand the, we've done that a couple of times, I think, on the ICH uh, TA, where we've. Um, opened it up and we can facilitate that. There was a process to that. And then obviously anything else you guys need us to do, we just need, we need the instructions. Michelle Fuller, hello, for the record. Um, or Brooke, were you, did you have some other thoughts about how, uh, rather than the work group concept, how champions would own pieces of this and, and move it forward? Yes, Brooke, for the record. Um, so part of the USICH plan that Emily was alluding to 
they have a whole section on their framework implementation and they are operationalizing the plan by chunk, you know chunking it out into working sessions and working groups and then using those work groups to gather feedback from people with lived experience advocacy organizations and the various different experts um, and, and kind of working on that in working sessions so i think if we as a as an ich technical assistance group champion different goals within the plan i i could kind of see that champion as sort of like the chair of that working group or the the sub chair right kind of helping to identify who needs to be a part of those conversations identifying those those you know community members and working with niani and her team to sort of convene those convert those meetings um but literally championing the effort and the work to build out that section of the plan so it's owned by somebody somebody's eyes are on it and we've got somebody paying attention to a statewide conversations around those topics. Chris. This is Chris. I. Uh, I'm trying to envision this in, in how it's going to work, of course, and how how would the champions work with the COCs or would we have different champions that work individually with the COCs? How how we how are, would you suggest we tie all of that together? So Brooke, for the record, it sounds like from the COC feedback that they want to be involved in the implementation of the plan. So I would imagine if one of the topics from our plan, let's say the housing plan, for example, whoever is championing housing would ensure that that invitation to the COCs, maybe there's already a housing working group from the COCs that are already working on housing, that champion would, would essentially be the liaison to that housing working group or just kind of help be a conduit to the COCs, um, but making sure that they're invited, that their folks that are working on housing are a part of that working group session, um, but essentially just helping to kind of convene and, and make sure we have an exclusive inclusive process as we can. So Hetty Reed for the record, Brooke, do you have a vision on what topics would need or what areas would need a champion? I would think the big goals that we have. Okay. Oh, how many there like eight? <clears throat> But yeah, I think for each one of our big goals, there would be a champion for each one of those. I think it's a good idea because it is it, it it's a big plan, so we have to figure out a way to divide and prioritize and conquer. Emily Paulson for the record, are are there opportunities as well for other committees of the ICH to own to own items that are in the plan like for example those items that are related to policy opportunities would we ask the I don't want to call it policy committee I know that's not right help me out Michelle what is the name of that committee the Legislative Committee of the ICH. Mm -hmm. Could we refer or name, and this, this is theoretical at this point, right? but could we look at that? Like, could we look at what are the items in the strategic plan that would be appropriate for the other committees to make actionable and, and develop the action items around? The, around. So, you know, whether it be legislative or communications related, I'm not sure what regulations does. Um, but does that make sense what I'm trying to ask? <laughs> I believe it does make sense with what you're trying to ask. And um, the Michelle Fuller, hello, for the record. Um, we, as a technical assistance committee, cannot assign work to another committee. Um, However, we can ask for their assistance 
Uh, but they can tell us no. <laughs> so we cannot assign work to them. So Brooke, for the record, is this the technical assistance strategic plan or is this the ICHH board that should be like, are we kind of recommending that the board adopt this idea of the action plan of how we're kind of suggesting that they implement it? Because then if it's coming from the board and they are directing the com communications committee or the regulations committee to take on certain components of the plan, I would think it could come from the board, right? Direction can come from the board, um, but that any recommendations we need, we would need to make um, for direction to another committee would need to be, we need to just need to be careful on the way that that comes across uh, because there is, you know, the legislative committee needs to work on legislation um, and granted there are things in the strategic plan that are legislative in nature, uh, but we just need to be careful not to not to make it look like we as the technical assistance committee are trying to give direction to another another committee. It would be a recommendation. Niani, did you want to? Um, if I could just add just a little bit of, um, I think, historical insight. So maybe it was last year, um, the ICH Council did enact the communications, regulations, and legislative uh, committees, subcommittees. And the idea originally from our chair of the ICH Council at the time was so they could work and then help with the strategic plan. So the way the bylaws are set up is that a council member has to be the chair of each one of those committees. And what actually happened was the committees were all um, formed and organized, and then they decided what they would work on themselves. And it was not the strategic plan. Um, but to be honest, the regulations committee only met one time and um, the chair at the time said that he would work on regulatory things. So they only met once. The communications committee met, I'm pretty sure twice before um, Director Wager got promoted and then could not. So that committee was suspended. Uh, Deputy Chief of Staff Bailey Bertola to Governor Sisolak was the chair of the legislative committee that met, mm, I want to say maybe three to four times, but they worked on um, different things other than the strategic plan. So Michelle is absolutely correct. You can make the recommendation and make the ask, but right now, and just full disclosure, we are waiting for three of the seats to be filled on the ICH because of the change um, that's that's gone on. So we're still waiting for that. So those committees at this point right now aren't um, functioning or meeting at this point. And we're waiting for the governor to um, assign the new chair of that of the council. Thank you, Niani. Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Emily Paulson for the record. So, so with that said, um, with with what Niani explained regarding the current uh, structure, I, I like Brooks' recommendation of um, assigning members from this committee to work 
but to work alongside Miani staff in um, owning areas of the work of the work of, of, of excuse me of the strategic plan and making it into really more of a work plan or action plan. And I think depending on the section that definitely should include other folks from state agencies and not and I, so going just going back to some of my earlier comments around you know broader broader feedback I think we have to be looking at the strategic plan I think we actually have to be very strategic about ensuring that certain state agency partners are present to help us determine how to actionize these these items. And again, there's always going to be recommendations because we can't obviously provide direction also to state agencies, but many of these uh, items are there's implications, right? For for state agencies, which I think obviously is that's the whole point of the ICH, right? Is to get state agencies to work together with local governments, providers, advocates, et cetera, right? So it's really, this is again, I think it's just another opportunity to facilitate that that objective. So sorry, that was very long-winded. I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat that back more. I'm gonna try to be more concise. I think we should, I think we should adopt Brooke's recommendation. And ha divvy this up a bit among the committee to work alongside Niani staff to identify who needs to to be involved in the work group. To, sorry, to lead work groups, determine who needs to be in those work groups, have you know involvement and participation in the work groups, be strategic to the area. So obviously, housing right would be we'd have to be thoughtful about who would need to be included. Obviously, state housing division. Would be the state agency that would need to be involved in that Nevada Housing Coalition as a lead advocacy organization. Um, staff from each of the continuum of care that are responsible for housing development now. As an example. I still feel like that wasn't really very concise. I apologize. Did I did that come across? Did that make sense? <laughs> Michelle Fuller Hollower, for the record, yes. Um, I think it does make sense. And I think to add to that, I think not only to develop the action steps, um, but to also make sure that we have <clears throat> listening sessions and whether it's individual listening listening sessions around those chunked up very very uh sophisticated terminology for our strategic plan chunked up pieces of our strategic plan <laughs> or, um, or if each of the work sections of the plan um come together with components like the strategic questions that we that we put out for the listening sessions and just have you know broader listening sessions So I think we've got an immediate next step of developing the crosswalk document or tool or whatever we're going to call it to send out to the COC. So we needed to determine, you know, who's going to work with Niani to help give some guidance and and uh, determine what's going to be in that document so that Niani and her team can get that developed and then so I think that's one next step I think the next next step that, that this broader team needs to do is determine who 
how we were going to kind of divvy up the plan itself and then who's going to champion those pieces of the plan. Does that sound about right? Or am I missing something? Sounds about right to me. Sounds good. So Brooke, since you had had the thought about the crosswalk, did I'm thinking you might have a something in mind, or was that you did did you not have anything in mind, and it was just a general thought? So I had two things in mind. One is I had a spreadsheet that I had uh, was going to use for our last um, ICH technical assistance meeting. Um, that I could sort of work with Niani to see if that could be a tool that we could leverage. And I was thinking, because we already use Teams for these meetings, is there an opportunity for us to create an external, a team channel that could be used to upload files, to store the document, and use a team channel as a way for us to, to capture the information, so. That would be awesome. Niani, do you have thoughts about that? Um, so I am hearing that I'm going to work with Brooke, look at the spreadsheet, get something put together, and then um, I'll reach out to my chief to see if we can get a Teams channel set up with all of the um, ICHTA members with access to that. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, and then granting access to the COCs so they can if if you know once they want to upload files or add their crosswalk information it could live in the teams channel so we can see it in real time okay just so i'm 100 oh sorry I'm, go ahead i'm Emily. not sure i'm not sure about other organizations i do not believe i can participate in externally organized teams channels in my organization So I don't know if that applies to anyone else. I just thought um, that just I just wanted you to know I wouldn't I for one would not be able to join a team's channel that belonged to an external organization. OK, do you have other thoughts, Emily, of how your organization does document sharing? I work for a health insurance company with we have a we are very secure, probably more so than an average organization. So I, I don't know the answer to that. And I don't want obviously if it's just applies to me, then by all means proceed. And um, but I, I wasn't sure if that might that technology issue may apply to other members of the group. Um, and then I'm so sorry, Madam Chair, I do have to drop um, early from today's call. And I was curious if I did so, if that would disrupt quorum on any additional action items that were on the agenda. Uh, Michelle Fuller, Hall Hour for record. Uh, Emily, thank you for letting us know that. Uh, Niani, will that, will Emily's leaving affect our quorum? That will, unless uh, Dr. Pamela Janelle is back on the line. And I can rejoin um, at 2.30. I do I do need to jump into into a call for the next 25 minutes. I'm so sorry. If, are there any action items that I need to be? Um, anything else is information only. So I think we should be OK. Yeah, Miani. Yeah, there there aren't um, any additional action items. On okay. the agenda. I'm sorry for the disruption. I'll rejoin as soon as I'm able. Thank, Thank you. you, Emily. Okay. So my brain back in turn. Michelle Fuller, hello for the record. 
OK, so I think we're set for the crop next steps for the crosswalk. Yes. Mm -hmm. OK, now how are we going to divvy up the or break up the actual um, plan itself? By strategic issue itself, by some other mechanism. Uh, Brooke, for the record, I think there's eight strategic issues. And how many members do we have for the technical assistance group? As of right now, you, there are nine members. Okay, nine members. So I think if we divided these eight amongst those nine members, then folks, you know, if somebody wanted to join and we had two people champion a certain issue because it was so big or something, I don't know. But I think to me that makes the most sense just to divide it among, amongst the. So I'm wondering, do we do that now or do we do an all call? Um, to expand the technical assistance committee first. Didn't we do that, Hetty Reed, for the record? And did some, we had some people join and then did some people unjoin? Okay. Thanks for that clarification. Yes. Well, I think it would work for the record if we could maybe just. Um, I mean, I think it would be good. To increase. Our membership. Um, but if. There's. Technical assistance members that. Are maybe already involved in some of these strategic issues that we could sort of start. And identify champions now with people that have been invested and been contributing to this group now. I think it would benefit the work given the state of the legislative process and everything that we have going on now. And then if there's everything is not adopted today, we can you know expand our membership and then see if other folks want to own an issue. Michelle Fuller, hello for the record. I think that's an excellent idea. How do the rest of the uh, committee members feel about that? I see Hetty's head nodding. <laughs> this is Chris. Silence for in, Chris? Just, since I'm relatively new, uh, what I would like to be able to do is because I had a lot of good input from the rural continuum of care is possibly uh, during our steering meeting or steering committee meeting that we have this week is let them know that we're looking at possibly opening this up our membership up for more participants on these issues and seeing if we could start drumming up support that I can do that much for sure right now. OK, thanks, Chris. So this is Hetty, and just thinking through the larger strategic issues as well, and I don't want to overcomplicate it, but I wonder if it's taking an issue and also having a champion within each COC. Since not all of us are as connected statewide. So Brooke, for the record, I think that's an important point that you're making, Hetty. And I think because this is a statewide technical assistance work group, that it would be important for whoever that champion is to be intentional about connecting with all three COCs in the state. 
um, to be gaining that feedback, leveraging existing work groups that are already working within the COCs and not reinventing the wheel, but being our liaison to those conversations as the champion. So championing it, but also including making sure that all the COCs are included and statewide partners. Right, on that issue, yeah. So, yeah. I totally see what you're saying. I, I, I think that could be challenging for, like, I would find that hard as a champion, um, just not knowing Southern Nevada and rural Nevada as well as Northern. So, Michelle Fuller Hellauer, for the record. So, let's say um, that if I was doing any one of these, pick one, um, coordination of primary, well, that's probably not fair. Um, not, education and workforce development. Um, if I was picking that one, you know, I would say that uh, you know, Southern Nevada, that might not be so hard, but, you know, Northern Nevada and, you know, rurals, I would have, you know, no clue. So I would start by reaching out to my local COC. If, if I didn't know who the COC leads were for the other two COCs, I would reach out to my local COC lead and say, hey, can you connect me to the COC lead in Northern Nevada and the rural Nevada? And then I would reach out to them and say, hey, I'm I'm championing the education and workforce development uh, section of our state plan. Can you help me get connected to folks in the education space so that we can make sure that we get their their voice and and make sure that they're connected to and do the same thing for you know workforce and have them do that you know connection make have them do the e connection or the whatever what and uh, do you already have meetings are you already as a coc connected with your educational um groups do you have a work group or or some you connect with them some in some way shape or form already what about your workforce development? Do you already have a group that is working with your COC? Do you have a, an established meeting? Can I just join the meeting? Can I come to that meeting and, and kind of find out what's already happening? And if so, just say, hey, can I jo join that one of your meetings and just kind of get a sense of what you're doing and do that and just kind of feel out for each COC what's happening. And it might just be a couple of conversations to find out what's happening they have a standard meeting and then find out, oh, now we have some standard meetings. What's the best way that we can, we as a state interagency council can get you connected to our state plan and get your feedback and get make sure that what you're doing is represented in our plan and that any anything that we can do as a state at the at state council and state committee are able to represent what, what your needs are. Is that kind of what you were thinking, Brooke? Yeah, and I hear Hattie's point because it sounds like a lot of work to be able to navigate all three COCs right throughout the state, right? But I think once that footwork is done, it may be a lot initially, but I think it's not us to be at all these different places, but it's us understanding the point people that we need to sort of have relationships with that's helping to, like Michelle's describing, feed our plan, participate in our work groups. If we decide to do a quarterly work group meeting on this topic or a monthly work group on this topic, we know then we have like our tentacles, we have our, our, our network of folks that we are working on that represent all three COCs, our behavioral health, you know, policy committees or whoever that is to help us inform this work so we're not operating in silos. But I think without us having a point person that's navigating that, it'll f like we won't necessarily have uh, a, an intentional focus on actually getting this information. I, I appreciate all that detail and the and the clarification. Um, I'm happy to participate and like be a champion. I um, I think uh, the scale of Southern Nevada sometimes and, and rural and Northern 
is different. And so just trying to be mindful that that might be intimidating for some folks on the group. That's a good point. So maybe a, like an introduction or other things, because I, th I think it's happened probably to all of us where maybe your email doesn't get as much attention because mm -hmm. folks might not know who you are. Mm -hmm. Good point. But I think what's for the record good about this committee too is that we've got statewide representation right and so leveraging even though i might not be a champion on your your strategic issue us working together to to leverage our network um so i can as and put folks in contact with the folks that i know um and do that e-introduction so we can leverage each other and not feel like even though i'm the champion i still have a bench of all of us working together on these issues. No, that's great. Yeah, I just didn't want champion to be like, like you the end all be all. You better go do that, you know, like we're all working together as a team. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh subcommittee members, anybody uh you know, just chomping at the bit to uh own one of these uh strategic issues? I joined last, so I will I'll decide last after I know Hetty's been on this group. Michelle, you all have been on this group longer than me. So deference. What do you want, Michelle? I want coordination of data and resources. Our sweet spot. I would so how do you read for the record? I would say um, I would have the most comfort with homelessness prevention and intervention and or or wraparound services. But I know wraparound has a lot of um, mention of SOAR, so I wonder if there's someone more suited to that. And for the record, I don't know if Pamela Janelle, Dr. Janelle is on, but I don't know if she'd be willing to champion education, but as our um, McKinney Vento representative, I think that would be an important frame. Is there any other members on the call that would like to volunteer? Okay, well, like, hearing none. Speak up, Brooke. I know, hearing none, I just. 
there's so many good ones. Um, but I think it, given the different it's hats that I wear, it probably makes sense for me to take the, the housing work group. Did you say housing? Yeah. OK, so Hetty, did you did you decide which one you're going to do? I'm good with either if someone else has an interest. All right. Of course, I can do any of them, any of them, but if uh, somebody really, really, really wants to do data and resources, I'll let them um, give me a a good argument of why they should do the uh, champion that rather than me. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think we what we have just to recap. Um, Michelle Fuller Hallauer, coordination of data and resources, Hetty, um, either homelessness prevention and intervention or wraparound. Um, Dr. Pamela Janelle, we, we think that she'll probably be education and workforce development, and Brooke will be housing. You're correct? Yeah. Sounds correct okay. to me. All right. And um, we will also do uh, do an all call. So Niani, can you prepare the um, the all call materials and so that we can get that sent out to um, the distribution lists and the COCs and all that, so that we can um, ask for <coughs> folks to uh, for interest if they if they are interested. Uh, before you do before you send that out, though, would you send that to Brooke and myself so we can review the request again? Um, prior to it uh, going out for uh, distribution, uh, just so that we can make sure that all the requests, that the request is clear um, and that we need our, um, you know, everybody knows what we're asking for and uh, that we can make sure that the turnaround is expedient and and that we are, everybody knows what we're what we want and we know what we are asking for and all that stuff is clear. Yes, I will do that. What what date are you looking for? What's the turnaround period that you're looking for? You, I think if I remember correctly, last time we gave either a two week or a month turnaround for responses to come in and then all the responses went out to the members. And then I think you added six at that point six new members yeah i think that was right so are you How looking to increase to i'm sorry to a certain number or kind of were you I would, I would just like to have, make sure that we have a good um, diverse representation on this group. Um, that I would like to ensure that we we are representing the people that we represent, right? That we represent. Our state and that we also that we have folks that are experience have it have lived experience on this group as well and um, we need we need broader representation on this group okay we will get um 
something over to you because we have what we used last time so we can send that and then if you want to make any changes or tweaks okay awesome thank you okay are we ready to move on to the next item we beat this one to death yeah that was not for the record thank you <laughs> all right uh, we'll close out agenda item number four, and we will move on to agenda item number five, uh, which is, uh, I think I need to find my uh, agenda. Okay, uh, agenda item number five for information only, review and discuss the federal strategic plan to prevent and end homelessness. So the, the federal United States Interagency Council released the, their strategic plan. Has anybody had an opportunity to read all in? Brooke, for the record, I've uh, started reading it and I haven't finished the whole plan, but I have started. And would you like to uh, give any, any comments on that, on the plan or what your thoughts are? Yes, so I can say from what I've read, the Brooke, for the record, um, the United States uh, Interagency Council on Homelessness um, in December released the Federal Strategic Plan. It does provide a good guidepost for the country in terms of reducing homelessness by 25% is the goal um, that the Biden administration is focusing on. Um, and the 19 federal agencies that are all kind of putting their efforts into addressing this plan, I think is an important um, component, even as we're thinking about our membership for the state I, uh, ICHH and our focus. It's like, as M Michelle mentioned, like having a broad reach of multiple different um, entities. You know, homelessness isn't just impacted by the homelessness response sector and the continuum of care, but thinking about the inflows into homelessness by the justice system. Um, you know, there's also Veterans Administration and Health and Human Services. So how are we kind of capturing and thinking about our reach as, as a state in terms of all in, all departments in, all focus in on helping to address this in a bipartisan effort? It's, it's definitely an all in um, strategy. Um, and so part of what the um, strategy calls for is thinking about this from different pillars um, and you know a, a focus on housing and, and services is, is one of the main pillars uh, but then also thinking about prevention and preventing people from entering into the homelessness system uh, at all um, and then thinking about our crisis response and our emergency response system and how we ensure that we've got a system that 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 is there to address homelessness when it occurs, but gets people out of it quickly and people aren't staying there and, and, and all of our investments aren't going into emergency response, but thinking about how we can increase our infrastructure to have enough places for people to live that they can afford and stay for the long term. Um, so I think that's kind of a, a high level in terms of just, you know, the buckets, we I address that in our statewide strategic plan. Um, we have housing and services and homeless prevention and intervention. So I think us taking the federal strategic plan um, and the ideas and the feedback that they've received and thinking about how we can leverage some of the essence of this plan and our work. Um, so we're helping to inform the plan and that we're able to sort of address Nevada's process and how we're gonna help reduce homelessness by 25% or more. I think will be important for us to be able to speak to this. So that's a quick summary. Thank you, Brooke. Michelle Fuller, hello for the record. Anybody else um, read the plan or have feedback on the plan? I think along with what you what you uh, did such a great job of summarizing, Brooke. Um, I really, in the plan, I like the fact that they 
you know, really spelled out other agencies and um, some of the the uh, funding that has recently been uh, distributed through, especially through the Biden Harris administration um, to help address uh, homelessness. So um, I think that it's something for that we as a state ICHH can think about as well. You know, how are we utilizing not only federal monies that's coming to the state and to our local jurisdictions, but how are we using our state money um, to best address our plan, right? Our strategic plan. And are we, as a state, using our monies to help address our plan? And I know that we, those of us that sit on the technical assistance committee, don't, we don't make the decisions about that and we can't control that. But I think that's something that we can maybe consider where we could ask, we have an opportunity, I think, with our legislation in going into legis legislative session or with our, um, the, with the council, with the IC ICHH council to say, to recommend and say, look, these are some spaces where there's some legislation or we invite the legislative subcommittee to have a joint meeting with us maybe and and share with them that these are some areas that maybe we could use your help as a legislative subcommittee to help us. Just a thought that came up as I was kind of looking through uh, the federal plan and thinking, how do we take some things that they've done at the federal plan and think about our local plan and what we are doing? So just trying to kind of just take things from a federal federal level and bring it narrow, narrow it down a little bit to the state level. Yeah. Other thoughts or ideas? If you haven't already, I would really suggest that uh, that you read the federal plan all in uh, the USICH has been having, you know, some webinars on the federal plan, kind of breaking it down. In fact, they had a uh, webinar earlier today, excuse me, to talk about the federal plan. Um, I don't know if that if that will be uh, repeated, but I think that they were recording it. So my guess is that, that they probably will um, have that archived. So you could go to the USICH website and make sure that you know you can check out their website and the resources about all in the federal strategic plan to prevent and end homelessness uh, make sure that you you check that out and um, i think as brooke indicated i think that we really need to keep that in mind as we are looking at our state plan uh, because the federal plan is you know all of our federal agencies and as we are rolling out the action plan for our state plan, uh, I think it's important for us to be in alignment with our with our federal our federal plan. So mm -hmm. okay. Last call for any com comments from the subcommittee on this item before I close this item. Okay. Uh, we'll close item number five and go on to item number six for information only. Uh, discussion on possible on possible tool to send out to the COC to survey people with lived experience or people currently experiencing homelessness. The goal is to obtain more insight to improve the strategic plan. This was a, was this an old item? Mm -hmm. Brooke, for so, the record, I think, I'm sorry, go ahead, Niani. 
Oh, sorry. Yanni Cooper for the record. Yes. If you remember correctly, I want to say a few months ago before uh, Lisa Lee stepped down, she was mentioning a tool or something to use and then um, things happened and she stepped away from the council and from the TA. So this item was an old item that was under her, but then obviously you removed her name from it. So at this point, um, I guess the question is, do we've had a lot of discussion about next steps um, and championing, championing and I, for some reason, can I say that word? Uh, championing, <laughs> having champions for, uh, for sections of our plan and acknowledging that we, and I even going to go so far as to say committing that we will make sure that we have uh, lived experience uh, voice. Uh, do we want to talk about a possible tool to survey people with lived experience? Or uh, do we feel that uh, we want to table this item uh, until a future time where we may want to talk about a survey uh, later? Brooke, for the record, I think that the crosswalk that we are wanting to develop for the strategic plan um, will be important information for us to learn what the COCs are already doing um, and to see if there is information that we can glean or listening sessions that are already happening that we can uh, maybe leverage before developing something new. Other thoughts? Yeah, Hedy Reed for the record, I agree with Brooke. I think it might be a good time to kind of look at what we have and what that information provides us and then go from there. So table it for now. Anyone else? Hearing no other comments, um, I'm going to go ahead and say let's uh, let's go ahead and table the conversation uh, on this item until we have further information um, from our crosswalk, so that we can have um, we can have informed uh, conversation. So with that, I will close item number six, and we will move on to item number seven for information only. Uh, discussion of agenda items for the next meeting, February 14th. I think that's Valentine's Day, uh, 2023. Oh, I get to spend Valentine's Day with you all. <laughs> yes, Brooke. <laughs> you were going to say something. No, I wasn't. You look like you were going to say something. I'm sorry. <laughs> Any agenda items for February 14th? Um, would uh, Brooke, for the record, would we, we want to hopefully have um, applications by that time to deliberate as a as a committee for membership? Or is that too soon do we think to deliberate on if we do an all call for membership? Niani? Yes, Niani Cooper for the record. So I'm looking at the calendar. The meeting is on Tuesday the 14th. So what we would be looking at is sending out probably the listserv letter next week, as long as you um, you guys agree on it. And then we can make the deadline. The deadline could be February 3rd, and then all the letters could be sent out to the members. But that would be a fast turnaround to the members via email in order to get their 
votes back in. It's doable. It would just depend on the in, the members would vote before the fourteenth meeting or vote at the fourteenth meeting. Mm, it would really depend on how you wanted to do that, Michelle. I I think last time there was a consensus and it was kind of done offline and then accepted on the open meeting. It just would depend on how you how you foresee doing that, Michelle, this time around. Yeah, I'm open to uh, whatever the the group would like to do. Um, if y'all would like to just uh, receive the applications and then review the applications and have open discussion uh, during the meeting, I am open to you know having the you know open open discussion about who you want to vote in and um, who you don't want to vote in. Um, during an open meeting, um, or you can have a scoring mechanism and voting mechanism, and then just bring forward a slate of people that you want to vote into um, for membership to the next meeting. So I'm open to your to the committee members um, input. Well, uh, this is Brooke for the record. I don't think we would have people join the next meeting, even if we did vote prior to. So I, I think it would make sense to have a discussion and maybe vote during the next meeting. If we can have applications due before then. So you're thinking um, bring the applications to the meeting, review the applications, discuss discuss why you may or may not want folks to be on the on the committee and then um, vote during the during the meeting. Is that different than what we, we've, we haven't done that in the past, right? That so is not the way we did it last okay. time. Okay. I don't want to change processes, so does but it make sense? We can do that. I mean, that's fine. The process is not a written process. Correct. It's up to this body on how exactly they want to do it. Uh, Brooke, for the record, I think we should just um, bring a slate for recommendations, um, and especially if there's no criteria, because I feel like it could be subjective if we're having a discussion on who to vote in and who not to. Is there a criteria on what we're, we're looking for? Or we just kind of yeah, make a decision? Actually, that's a great question. Um, Niani, you want to bring up the, can you bring up the, um, just the criteria that we were, we talked about last time? Um, yeah, so I can actually, I'm wondering if I can Oh, hopefully I can screen share this of what we sent out last time. I can't tell. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. So the highlighted portion, I literally just threw in an email to Michelle, um, but this was exactly what was sent out last time. The Technical Assistance Subcommittee to Nevada Interagency Council on Homelessness to Housing is recruiting for additional members to join. Um, and then it just simply said meets once a month to develop, update, statewide strategic plan, homelessness, and focused on the goals that are addressed. And they just sent a letter of interest to uh, the homeless to housing email address with their name, title, organization, and information. So that's what was sent out the last time we did it. 
Uh, I was referring more to the scoring of the applications. Sorry, yes. If I move this over, can you see this document? Yeah. Like the, the not who scored what, but how we were brain, how we were scoring. Oh, okay. Like what what criteria we were scoring by? Stop screen sharing it till I get that information. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> I'm like, oh, let me share everything. Um, <laughs> actually, it was just it was just you guys just read the letters and then voted. Okay. Um. Hold on. And the vote was done via email. And then what was brought to the next meeting was just everybody who was being voted in. But there wasn't a discussion under the live meeting. OK, so. I used a, a methodology when I was doing going through the applications. <laughs> so. I looked at um, the distribution of how many, how many, how many people we already had from different places in the across the state versus um, our population distribution, so that we could try to get distribution representation. And we didn't have anybody from the rurals. Right, so we needed to make sure that we had rural representation. And um, I also made sure that we had uh, lived experience. Um, we had, so anybody who had lived experience uh, um, automatically went, to, went toward the top of my list, right? And it just so happened that that applicant also works worked in homeless services and had experience in mental health and substance use. So, um, so worked with substance use clients. So that that person got you know, like lots of <laughs> lots of scoring for me, right? And so, but I had this matrix that I had kind of just like on paper, just kind of, you know, I was like looking at different components and, you know, as as they had those types of things. I was giving them different checks, so to speak. And then we had applicants that had experience working in homeless services, right? And um, but they also had experience working homeless services, but didn't follow the rest of the directions. Like they didn't give, you know, follow the rest of the directions that were in the email of what they needed to provide. And so I was like, well, OK. Um, and then, you know, we have folks that had experience in almost services and mental health and substance use. And then there were folks that, you know, had a statewide perspective and managing housing programs and other things. Right. So so there, we had a broad scope of people. And so it was just kind of having to I set up this kind of just matrix and kind of gave points and tried to balance the what we needed for perspective and who what would give us the the broadest perspective for the for the uh, representation um, when I did my vote. So that's how that's how I did the distribution. So I don't know if we wanted to set up. We want a small group to set up a scoring matrix or if we just want to do a subjective scoring for all the all the uh, applications and do the way we've done it before and just 
tally him up and send him to Niani and let her do a, a overall score, and that's the slate that comes forward. Well, uh, this is for the record. I think it would be helpful to have a scoring criteria, and even as a as a body thinking about what we are looking for as far as representation. Um, I think from my short time being on this body, it sounds like that what's important as well is commitment, like part of the communication that goes out, like having the calendar of when our meetings are and the time to ensure that we've got quorum, um, and and getting folks that could commit to the you know being a champion or you know just something that we can sort of gather the expertise and the level of commitment that we need to move the work so do you have some thoughts on what that would I mean, I think you already have a really great metrics. It sounds like of, of the criteria that you used. Can we maybe adopt like leverage that? And share it amongst the group and maybe just do a, a one to five Likert scale or something to score. The applicants. Yeah. But I think that would be important if we're going to score folks on their lived experience and that they get points for that, then I would want the communication that goes out to say, you know, to tell us if they have lived experience or not, or kind of be transparent about what we're looking for as far as priority. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay, I'll clean that up a little bit and get that sent out. Okay, so we'll put that um, review of the applications and um, discussion and review of the applications. And then. Um, For possible action of voting of new membership. Yeah. We want to keep. Shh. Did you want Sorry, to say Michelle. something? No, go ahead, <laughs> um, did we want to Michelle Fuller Hell Hour for the record? Um, did did we want to keep the item? Um, of we, I'm thinking we want to keep the discussion and and any updates or discussion and next steps or something. I don't know how we want to say it for the strategic plan. I mean, that's what we're meet for. So this is Hetty. Can I clarify? So we're going to send out a call for new members. Do an independent. Michelle's going to send out some information on the matrix that she used previously. We're going to vote via email and then possibly have new members at the February meeting or March. I guess I lost track. I'm sorry. Uh, Brooke, for the record, I thought we would have the scoring <clears throat> criteria be provided in advance. I don't know if the applications can be sent to the members in advance of our next meeting, but have a discussion and a vote at our February meeting to okay. vote in our new members. Okay. That sounds good. And then we would just, I'm sorry, Niani Cooper for the record, just to clarify, then we would invite the new members to the March meeting. Is yeah. that, mm -hmm. is, okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Now to your question, Michelle, but for the record around the strategic plan, um, 
we've got these two action items around the crosswalk plan being worked on, and then we've identified a few champions. So um, I'm not sure if the champions then would have items on our agenda to do a report out as to sort of any work that's happened in the month or whatever related to their act, you know, any um anything that any new developments related to their goals or issues. Is there a way that we could craft an a, an agenda item that would encompass allowing the members that are not present currently um, to identify if there's a an area they want to champion to for them to raise their hand and say, hey, I want to own that that area and for any champions to have an opportunity to report out if they want all during one agenda item. So strategic issues updates or something around that strategic strategic issues. And maybe we have in the agenda, do we map out each one of the strategic issues? So as like a sub bullet, we have housing, homelessness prevention. And, and, and that way we can, yeah, just have an out update. Mm -hmm. So that each one can we can go this is what this oh we still need a champion for this one does anybody and then right. any updates right and that'd we be like a standing any. item for us yeah and michelle would you want that as um i would think that would be a standing informational item because if i was correct ryan said you could just state it you didn't have to take a vote on it so would we want that a standing informational item on the agenda Yeah, and then if there's any voting items, then we could just identify ahead of time. I think if there's anything that needs to be voted on, because if we're if it's a voting item, then if we lose quorum, we can't we can't talk about that item. Right. Correct. And OK, so and how we can um, and we can keep the actionable items at the very top, because if I'm not mistaken, usually we have quorum at the very top, the first 30 minutes to an hour, and then there could be conflicts down the. Down the agenda item, so we can start doing that. Um, continuously building the action items at the very top and the discussion items at the bottom. OK, Neonie Cooper for the record, just so I'm clear. So, so far we have we we are going to have the discussion with the possible action on voting the new members. Um, we are going to have a crosswalk item on the agenda. And then also. The. Standing update. With the bullet points for all eight issues always on the agenda, right? So we have those three items moving forward so far. I don't know if we'll always have the crosswalk on the agenda. Until. It, it may be called something else as it evolves. Strategic issue updates. Yeah, that will be OK. That will be on there. OK. Brooke, for the record, is there any of this information that needs to go to the board? For approval or 
in, like input or do we need do we are we required to update them on our action plan progress? So Michelle is a standing. Um, she has a standing place on the agenda for the ICH Council where she gives an update on what's going on the ICH TA. Okay. So right now they they have a meeting scheduled for next week on the 18th. She is on that agenda. They don't have another meeting scheduled because of legislative session. And then also they're trying to give some time to get the replacements of a chair and the other two missing members. Okay. What time is that meeting? I don't have that on my calendar. One o'clock on the 18th. Okay. All right, Michelle Fuller, hello, record. Any other items for our February meeting? Hearing none, we will close this agenda item and move to our last public comment of this meeting. Uh, this is no action may be taken upon a matter under this item of the agenda until the matter itself has been specifically included on the agenda as an item upon which action may be taken. Comments will be limited to three minutes. Please make sure that you Unmute yourself um, and state your name for the record. Um, Megan? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect. Um, my name is Megan O'Farrell for the record, and I am a resident of Washoe County. Thank you for your time today. Um, I'm calling in today because I wanted to actually talk about the graphs that are on the point in time count on the COC. Um, I've been finding them to be very confusing and actually at times often misleading. I can see that they're showcasing that we had overall less people um, surveyed, it looks like, from 1708 last year to 1605. For this, or for 2022, sorry, we're in 2023 now. Um, so 2021 and 2022 timeframes, but there were 96 recorded deaths of people who were experiencing homelessness um, that we know of, which was actually doubled from 2021. So the KT has had less people contacted and seemingly more people sheltered, but no real accounting for the folks who actually passed away who are unhoused. And so I'm just curious if this is the information that we as community members are supposed to be using, and I'm assuming is also the information that you as folks who are helping guide committees are using. Um, how is that information being accounted? Uh, because we understand that people don't just disappear um, and that they need to be accounted for when they pass um, as well and not hopefully just included as being no longer unsheltered. Um, and so I was just curious what kind of ways we can move forward information on these graphs to make it so that we're accounting for some of these things because it is very misleading and it seems like it would offer information that is not quite correct and so I would just like to know even after looking further into their extra data that they counted no information about the deaths and so we have again experienced double almost the amount of people who have died on the streets since the county has taken over this program and no real accounting for it in any of the graphs that we as the community can see which I feel is very alarming since there is a lot of money being funneled into this program and we aren't really seeing some of these other measures that actually can gauge the success of this program. So I just wanted to express that concern to you all and see if there are ways that we can have a conversation about making this data a little bit more um, available to the community who also needs to use it, people who are advocates, people who are helping um, people who are unhoused, who don't necessarily work for the city or the county, um, as this is the main information that's presented to all of us. So thank you again for your time today. I appreciate it. 
Thank you, Megan. Any other public comment? Hi, this is Emily. Paul Seinbeck. Can I speak during public comment? Of course you can. Okay, I wanted to make a suggestion earlier before I had to hop off. And again, I'm sorry for that disruption, but the strategic plan is not on the web page for the ICH. Can we can we make sure that's easily accessible on the ICH web page so we can direct people easily to find the statewide plan? Niani Cooper, for the record, the strategic plan is posted on the dwss.mv.gov site. Okay, it's, I'm on the DPBH website. Uh, yeah. Could we have it there as well? Because there's information here about the ICH, and I think that'd be another good place to have it. So when I did a Google search of the ICH, that was the top page that came up, Miani, was the D, uh, DHHS DPBH site. And unfortunately, the um, Interagency Council on Homelessness to Housing was housed under DPBH at one point in time. DWSS has taken that over, so it would only now be found on the DWSS site. Okay, and I understand we may not have any control over this, and again, it would just be a recommendation, but could we at least get them then to link to the right website? I just, if 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 um, someone navigated to this page, it would just be great if it helped direct them to the to a place where they ha can have current and accurate information about the council. Okay, I will definitely send that suggestion up. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Niani. Any other public comment? Seeing none. Hearing none, I will close public comment. And at this time, uh, 311, I will call the meeting of the Technical Assistance Subcommittee of the Interagency Council on Homelessness to Housing adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. It was so enjoyable to spend this time with you. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you all. Oh, now we see your face, Chris. <laughs> he said, bye bye. He's like, I'm out. Peace. <laughs> bye. bye.